Papers. Uh, you probably know him best from The Case for Mars, his original book, and now he's done another one, Living on Mars. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who really needs no introduction to this crowd, Mr. Bob Zubrin. Thank you. Okay, so um, thanks for that introduction and thanks to uh, the National Space Society for inviting me and uh, more importantly for all the work that the National Space Society uh, and its members you do to advance the cause of uh, human exploration and settlement of space because I think uh, it's very clear to all of us that if there is to be a positive human future, it needs to be an open future one with an open frontier, open possibilities, um, a future of freedom. And, that, and, and the key to that is opening up the rest of the universe to humankind. Um, now, um, as was said, uh, I you know, am uh, best known for my devising of the Mars Direct Plan on how we can send humans to Mars in our time. And uh, I firmly believe that we can. From a technical point of view, we are much closer today to sending humans to Mars than we were to being able to send uh, men to the moon in 1961, and we were there eight years later. Uh, given a decision, um, if President Obama was this year to announce a commitment to send humans to Mars with similar uh, uh, verve uh, and vigor uh, as John F. Kennedy did in with regard to the moon in 61, we could be on Mars by the end of his second term, and that is what we should do. Now, I've got a whole book that explains exactly how, and it's called The Case for Mars, and they've got it at the Mars Society table in the next room, and of course I've given many talks uh, at National Space Society conventions and elsewhere explaining this. And given that, uh, however, that um, most of you have been to one or another of these conventions in the past. Um, uh, I've decided in this talk to break some new ground, okay, which is to discuss not how to get to Mars, but how to live well once you're there. Okay, so, um, and there's this book out under my name that uh, purports to explain how this can be done. Um, and. Uh, there's a lot of good science in this book. It explains a lot of survival skills and so forth and the technologies required to settle Mars. But there's also uh, a lot of other kinds of tips like how to put one past the NASA bureaucracy and, and, and other things that will be necessary to live well on Mars. Now I say the book was published under my name um, and, and that is true, it, it, as you can see, it, it has been. But the um, it wasn't actually written by me. Let me tell you who wrote it, okay? Uh, a man whose career has required the use of several names, Robert Zubrin was born in New Plymouth in 2071 and graduated Heinlein High in 2099. Due to an unfortunate accident that caused his parents pay off to the school administration to be misplaced, he was mistakenly ranked near the bottom of his class and was forced to accept employment from NASA for seven years, a time span he calls his dark period. Eventually, however, he was freed and finding honest work achieved interplanetary renown and financial success through a series of highly lucrative ventures in the areas of prospecting claim evaluation, aerial paleontology, and pre-terraforming real estate development. He has no proven relation whatsoever to his 20th century namesake, a humorless astronautical engineer who developed the Mars Direct Mission Plan, authored the classic treatise The Case for Mars, and led the founding of the Mars Society in 1998. He regrets any confusion his current nom de plume may have caused. Okay. So that's the guy who wrote this book. Okay. He just channeled it through me. Okay. And uh, which I allowed him to do because I get part of the royalties. But the um, but nevertheless, there's a lot of interesting information in this book. Um, and uh, seeing the world from the perspective of the future is certainly a very useful thing to do. Uh, so uh, here's the world uh, from and, and life from the point of view of someone living on the Martian frontier. Okay, uh, can we have the next uh, chart? Or do I do it with this? Yep, I do. Okay. 
Uh, okay, first he talks about how you want to get to Mars. And, uh, you know, a lot of people today are talking about putting cycling spacecraft in regular orbit between Earth and Mars um, because you don't have to keep launching them, they just fly forever. And, um, and that is precisely the problem with them. They've been there forever. And so they stink to high heaven. And so he strongly recommends that you do not take a cycler to Mars. Um, the, uh, I mean, you know, Mir, um, which was only up for around 12 years by 2000, was filled with green slime. Um, and the cyclers are, are likely to be uh, more problematical. Uh, nor does uh, he recommend taking an extremely expensive high velocity nuclear electric spacecraft. By the way, you'll notice here that this uh, uh, nuclear ion drive spacecraft has its thrusters pointing in the wrong way to decelerate on approach from Mars. So, so, so um, they're off to infinity and beyond. And the, um, so he recommends that you get to Mars the way the first explorers did, which is just to take uh, minimum energy trajectories, home and transfers, get there in eight months, and preferably ride the freight. There are people having new HAB modules shipped out to Mars. They want to have them tested before they take possession, so you can actually ride in one of these things uh, for free and uh, get to Mars the old-fashioned way. Now, spacesuits. Um, there's two kinds of spacesuits. There's the old-fashioned, you know, um, uh, uh, inflatable suits, the kind that Neil Armstrong wore on the moon and the early explorers wore on Mars. And then there's the new elastic spacesuits. Instead of using pneumatics to pressurize, they use elastic. And so they fit the skin very tightly. And they have uh, these incredible models in the sales department of the stores showing you how you'll look in these suits. As you can see uh, on the left, you could potentially look very sexy. But that's how they look in the suits. How you might look in the suit is, is shown more in the middle diagram. So for most people, you're much better off taking a pneumatic. Um, and he strongly recommends it. Also, you see, if your weight ever changes while you, after you buy the elastic suit, you cannot gain any weight, or it will be too constricting. So you have to absolutely manage your diet, which is uh, uh, unacceptable. Um, OK, so he talks. Um, about the necessity of fast transport on Mars. Um, because if you have the ability to travel fast, there's all kinds of business opportunities that can be available to you. That is, especially if you can uh, travel faster than the vehicles of the Mars Authority. Um, so for instance, engaging in informal salvage operations, for example. Okay. Uh, of course, you need power on Mars. Uh, he recommends that you forego solar power uh, because uh, the panels get dusted up and uh, it, spending all your time uh, uh, whisking away dust from uh, solar panels will expose you to ridicule from your neighbors. Um, now, if you live in a central settlement like New Plymouth, uh, you have access to nuclear power from the settlement's main base. But if you are in a, in a subsidiary settlement or in the outback, uh, you, you probably won't. Um, However, he, I mean, in other words, this is part of the scientific discussion in the book. He discusses the availability of geothermal power on Mars, and uh, which is uh, reliable around the clock and which can be accessed for the expense of a, a drilling rig and associated apparatus, significantly cheaper than a nuke. And, and uh, so that if you're involved in a new outlying settlement, that's how you want to go. And uh, prospecting for geothermal uh, power sources is potentially a way to make some money. Uh, now, you have a choice of rigid HABs or inflatable HABs. Um, he's skeptical of uh, inflatable HABs, um, especially uh, if you cannot completely trust your spouse. I mean, if you have a relationship that might break up, um, y you may find yourself coming home to a deflated HAB, which can be annoying. Um, talks about uh, techniques for uh, navigation on Mars using uh, celestial navigation in case the computerized uh, GPS system fails. Uh, talks about survival techniques in the desert, uh, all kinds of survival tricks uh, that could allow you to survive if you're stranded out in the desert, in particular stranded out there at night. 